Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome weekend. Thank you for joining me for another video and we're just going to go around and look at a couple of the snakes, do a quick update on them and Oliver, the male baby green anaconda is going to eat or we're going to attempt to uh, see if he wants to eat so it is his time for a meal and he does eat a live rat so uh, be aware on that. We'll do that a little bit later so if you guys don't want to see that then uh, we can just check out some snakes before. And I kind of bumped up his meal to weans instead of the uh, rat pups because even some of these bull pythons like this Orange Dream uh, Leopard Enchi Pied is on weans. So I think if you know a uh, ball python at this size can take that size meal, then definitely Oliver should be able to. But everybody's doing very well. Most of them are eating well, unfortunately, the two pides, the two female pides, um, are basically back on live, and that's just a regular pide. She will not touch frozen thawed anymore, and for some reason, this black pastel pide is hit or miss on frozen thawed. But if I throw live in there, she uh, she eats it. So we kind of took some steps backwards. I don't understand why. I do know that people talk about a thousand gram wall where some of the ball pythons do kind of slow down on eating for a little bit, so that might be why, but I would love for them to get back on food so we can uh, be on track for the future uh, sooner than later on the breeding projects, and this is just a pastel clown, which she's getting very large, and we have the... Uh, fire Enchi Clown. So this girl right here is getting very big. She's 2021 eating on uh, weaned, weaned rats. So the bigger snakes or the bigger uh, ball pythons are on smalls, which I don't know if I should move them up to mediums, but the snakes from 2021 are all on, uh, yeah, weans. So very beautiful snake. And hopefully she keeps some of this color because she has fire in her, but only time will tell. And then this lovely lady is a butter clown. Really nice markings. I love the, the yellows, to the whites, to the browns. And then it does appear that she has kind of a greenish tint to her eyes. So very excited for her. I really think I'm gonna put the banana clown to her and uh, try to make some banana butter clowns, which I think would be really cool. And of course, I gotta show you guys uh, some of the boas. So this girl right here is doing very well. It's a VPI jungle, trying to get the camera on a good angle with her. Really nice patterns, awesome colors on her tail, and very excited to see her grow up. The Motley IMG is shedding and he's getting darker but sometimes he does get very light to very dark depending on the day. And then you can see how crazy his eyes are in, uh, in blue. And so he definitely probably can't see very much. So I really don't want to handle him because he might bite just for that fact alone. And I think this girl went into shed a couple of days ago because of her colorations are... Uh, they were like her belly was a little creamy and it really wasn't the there now it looks better so I think she is going to shed out a little bit because you can see how, how white and black the belly is before it was kind of a nice cream color I didn't notice her eyes go uh, that's into shed but I don't, I don't know the correct terminology for that but beautiful snake VPI IMG female, 2021. So she is definitely a big snake, and she's kind of on weaned as well. So definitely feeding her a little bit larger than a lot of my 2021, just because of how much she is growing. And we'll see what the future holds for her. Not really, uh, you know. It does make me nervous to try to breed boas, but. We'll do the ball python stuff first, and then we'll get into the the boas in the future. So the moon glow is doing very well, growing nicely, 2020. So you can see the size difference between her 
and the 2021 over there, but uh, she is on weaned as well, or rat pups, whichever. But just a very, very calm, beautiful snake. And the patterns look nice on her. And then we'll check out the Guyana, the true red tail. This girl is definitely growing. She is now on weans as well. I might possibly try smalls with her. We'll see what happens. But she's definitely grown a lot over the last couple of months, which is very exciting. Beautiful blood red tail with the very nice bright whites. And we do not want her to go onto another level and in between the tubs because it does take them a while to get them out if that happens. So we're probably gonna have to, uh, probably gonna have to use two hands on her. Okay, so we got the Guyana back in her cage. And yes, all of her still on paper. Um, I, RectiChip has been out of stock for a while and I really don't like Aspen in high humidity cages because it just gets really wet and it's just super gross. So, you see, uh, he is on paper. So, um, it's cheaper, it's easier to maintain and the water, I normally take the water out because of when this happens, they kind of like to hide. So Oliver's doing well. He still likes to uh, bite, but I can at least handle him for a certain period of time. I mean, it, it's random. We'll be hanging out for a little bit, taking pictures, putting him on Instagram. And then all of a sudden he just bites me like five, six, seven, eight times in a row. And <laughs> then I guess that means it's uh, playtime is over. So still working on him. A lot of anacondas, like my two other ones are phenomenal. I can hold them for as long as I want to, whenever I want to, and they don't give me any issues. So you win some, you lose some. Some anacondas can be extremely unpredictable and Oliver is one of them. So you can see how dark he is compared to the other ones or, a, or most anacondas. So very, olivey green, which is kind of the hint of the name. A lot of browns, beautiful markings on him though. I like the anacondas with a lot of pattern. I do see some anacondas with very little pattern and blotches that are totally all over the place, but I'm very glad that, uh, you know, I got, I got three anacondas with very phenomenal coloring and a lot of patterns. So in the future, hopefully that helps. So sometimes he will give like a defensive strike, which is what he did. And then he kind of realizes that, hey, this is food. So when he does bite me, it's never a feeding strike. It's more of like a, I'm annoyed with you type of thing. So like right there, another, I'm annoyed. It's a defensive strike, but uh, it does take him a little bit of time to realize that this is food and this is what I go through. <laughs> so anacondas, yes, when they're babies, they're extremely um, annoying <laughs> to try to get them to eat. Most of the time they are on quail for quite a while. Luckily he's well, sometimes on rats. Whoops, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get bit and I just want him to eat because it has been about two weeks. So I'm feeding this one a little bit uh, less than I've, I'm feeding the females. I don't, there's no really any particular reason for that, but I really don't want the males to get too large, too fat and too overweight. I don't know, maybe he, maybe he won't eat, but it's very, very difficult to anacondas. There it is. It looks like he's super interested. Hopefully he does not miss <laughs> and bite me because when they're younger, their aim is not the greatest. So another, another strike of being annoyed. So this is kind of what I deal with. And now they're just hanging out. So tongue flickering like in a normal sense. That's what's really weird with anacondas. Like I said, they can be pretty unpredictable. They really don't give off the normal pattern or the vibe or, or like the, the S shape I'm gonna strike type of thing. 
And then sometimes they just, they just bite. So, I really want to see, give you guys the shot on the strike, but it looks like he's, again, more annoyed than anything else, which I can definitely understand. There we go. No, go that way. Go this way. So that's not, like, that's not even like a, uh, it's so frustrating. That's not even a hunger strike. That's just a get off of me. But he needs to eat, and I don't want to leave this mouse in here with him because we all know, or this rat, because rats can do a lot of damage to snakes and they can definitely hurt them. So let's see what's about to happen. Nothing. <laughs> so if you own an anaconda, this is basically what you get as babies. When they do get older, they get much better, I promise. Uh, you guys have seen Pop-Tart and Mountain Dew eating, but again, this is like... him eat and it's kind of not that exciting to watch anacondas eat because all three of the anacondas completely wrap the prey and then they kind of eat through the uh, the tunnel that they make of the wrap so even on the biggest anaconda that I have it's not the greatest snake to watch eat because you really can't see what's going on uh, but we can we can still uh, watch him for just a little bit because he is almost done so that meal was not anything spectacular or large which i don't know maybe he could he could probably eat two of those a week without a problem but with the males i kind of want to keep them just a little on the leaner side for breeding later on uh, i've heard when males get too overweight too fat too plump uh, they kind of lose the sex drive so they really um they really don't want to breed if they're just a ball of goo so <laughs> trying to keep him lean and uh, i guess lean and mean because sometimes he does like to bite like i said but he's eating very well very excited um he's a december born 2021 december i think December, December or January, so only a couple months old and on rats, which is exciting. He's going to finish that up. Hopefully, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you again for the support. I really do appreciate that. And uh, I should have another video out for you guys possibly later today and most definitely tomorrow. So stick around for that, and I'll see you guys on the next video.